Hello anybody and welcome, I'm Christian from ISI and this is a tutorial slash showcase of my image effect shaders. So I've been working on this, oh I had an idea to work on a pencil, sort of pencil drawn shader and so I did some research into how making image effects and I've come up with a way to create image effect shaders using um, shader graph which is something I couldn't find any information on. So this is just a simple pencil shader, it's got some features, it renders using a couple of different pencil textures that I have here and then just uses that the brightness of that pixel to draw those different textures. It also has some functionality for adding colors as well, so if I turn up the color intensity, you can see it also has this sort of pencil drawn look to the colors as well. And that can all be, you know, you can affect the saturation and stuff. So yeah, that's what I've done. And there's also this um, stop motion style jitteriness stuff to it, where it sort of changes. It look, works better when I'm not recording. When I'm recording it has a bit of glitchiness, but when I'm not, it looks quite nice. And it can give that look of um, every frame being drawn differently. It would look better if my textures weren't didn't tile as much. So if I zoom in, you can clearly see the repeating textures the whole way through. So that kind of breaks the illusion a little bit. It would look much nicer if you had higher resolution textures. So um, I've also made some other ones and I'll show you how to use them. So this is the one I'm using currently. It uses the um, render features of the board renderer and the universal render pipeline. So I'm using a little outline outline shader which gives you these lines around the edges and that gives it a more sketchy look it looks like it was sketched out and someone drew the outlines around everything and stuff so to use them you've just got to put your shader in there and set the blip material pass to zero and it works so I've got another one that I'll show off yeah this one's sort of a ditha shader it just uses the ditha node inside of the shader graph so it just gives you this sort of Ithid effect, you probably can't see it on the YouTube, it's also got a bit of noise I've done as well, so that can be customized. But I'm also going to try making a, another shader to show off how to actually use these. So I'll create a new shader graph and I'll call it Night Vision. And let's open this up. Oh! It seems to have remembered the shader I did as a demonstration before I started. I'm actually going to delete this and show everything that needs to be done. So I make sure I don't miss anything. So let's just delete all these settings and stuff. So the first thing you need to do is you need a texture. So this will be how Unity gives you the um, screen texture to actually work with. I normally call it base RGB. That's not important. What is important is this has to be called um, main text. If you don't call it main text, this will not work. So make sure it's called main text. It also gets a bold font when you name it main text. Pretty sure that's just to let you know that it's actually working. So you can just drag this in and then you can sample from a texture or sample texture. And you can pass it in. Right now you've got an image effect shader, it's just not doing anything. So if I just save this and go back to the scene, I will create a material for this. Create material. Just call it night vision. And I will also create a new forward render to demonstrate how to do that. So you just want to go to rendering, universal render pipeline, and a forward renderer. I'm just going to call it custom, that's fine. And you just need to add a new render feature and do blit. So this is not something you would have by default with lightweight render pipeline. This is a render feature that I have. Um, I got it from a Unity tutorial on tune shading. And what the blit allows you to do is like you would do if you were doing image effect shading in code. It just uses the blit of a... It just blitz your material to the screen, pretty much. So if I just put this on here, it won't do anything because I haven't set it. I'll set it here. Stem void renderer. And there you go. So everything's black, which means it's working. Um, what ha you have to do is you have to set this to zero or else not, it won't work. Well, some shaders do, but it's for shader graph, you have to set it to zero. If you had like multi-pass shaders, you can set which material pass you actually want to be blitzing with. So if you had like a multi-pass shader, you would have to put it in like three times or whatever, and then put one for each of the blitz, I'm pretty sure, for each material pass you want to do. So anyway, this works fine. You can rename this to whatever you want. I'm just going to do that. And in case you have multiple, um, multiple image effects, you'd want to name them so you can keep track of them easily. And I think you want to do that as well, change that name if you've got multiple. So I'll call this um, Blit Night Vision. There we go. I'm pretty sure you have to name that or else you might get conflicts when it's doing things. I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, let's add some more to this night vision shader. So now that you've got access to the actual material itself, 
you can do stuff with it. So I'm going to create like a night vision effect. So I've got this and I can pass it through. And now I've got the scene rendering in green. Oh, and also that's something I've just realized. You have to set this to after rendering transparency. There you go. Now it's got the background. You shouldn't do after rendering because you can get, well, you can, but as you can see, it kind of doesn't look as nice. It skips post-processing. It'll override any post-processing ha effects you have. And if you set it to after rendering post-processing, it doesn't actually render at all. So just after rendering transparency is the preferred because you still get things like bloom and vignette and stuff like that. So you normally want to do it after rendering transparency. Anyway, so I'm going to add some more features to this. For instance, I'm going to, rather than just sampling the green, I'm going to run the entire texture into a dither node and then run that dither into the green channel of this combine. So now, instead of just sampling green, for instance, let's say you have a red, a red room, you won't see anything at all if you just render the green. But if you sample it as like a grayscale texture and then do green, you'll actually get a sort of more realistic night vision texture. So yeah, with the dither, it kind of looks night vision-y. Just going to make a few more adjustments. I'm going to add a right in this offset. I'm just going to offset it because often for night vision effects, you're going to want oh, my computer's a bit laggy. You know, do you want it to be 100% black? You always want to have a little bit of noisy green look to it. So I'm just going to pop this into and add. There we go, so now we can offset the brightness, and we also want to multiply it. I'm going to do a brightness factor just to make it more pronounced. Um, you're probably going to want to do this before the dither. If you do it after the dither, the dither won't look right because you'll be multiplying it after. If you do it before the dither, the dither will adjust its dithering based on how bright it is coming in. So just make sure you do that if you're making your own shaders. I'll just call this brightness. And I can just plug that in. And so if I save this and go back to the scene. There you go, back in the scene. So now you can go into the night vision shader and I can set a brightness offset. So you can see I can make the dark areas just a bit brighter. So if I do like 0 0.5 and then if I set the brightness to 0 0.5, It'll change the range of the shader. So now the range will go from 0 0.5 to 1 and set it from 0 to 1. So you can affect brightness to get the kind of effect you want. I prefer a little bit of a darker shader. So yeah, but you can do a lot of other. I found one of the coolest things you can do is if before I do the ether again, actually before I do anything, I will... You can create gradients in shader graphs, so just by selecting gradient. These will not be exposed, these are just um, in, in shader graph, you can't actually change them elsewhere. So if I do a black and white, you've got a sort of a black and white gradient, but you can stick one in the middle. Let's just go 50 and set it to 50. You can set it to fixed. If I set this to fixed, maybe I'll add some more. Let's go um, 25. I'll leave it like that for now, but give a nice effect. You just pop your gradient in and add a sample gradient. Let's just save this. What you'll get is almost a tune shading look. So you could sample from a gradient or you can sample from like a texture if you've got like a particular texture you want to sample from. But you can see now I've got this sort of um, color banding on things. So with more different gradients you can customize it to how you want. So this one's got a bias towards brighter colors and the dark colors are much smaller on the scale. So you can do tune shading and the best part about I find about this whole system is because it's doing things like tune shading and stuff in the um just inside the renderer. So if I was to just bypass everything and just sample from the gradient and then set it to the color I've pretty much set a global tune shading. So anything I add into the game will get a tune shading to it. Actually, this is going to make it black and white. What you actually want to do is um, 
you're going to want to multiply this if you want to add color as well. So I'll just multiply this to demonstrate. E. Put this in there. This isn't 100% accurate because I'm multiplying colors multiple, multiple times, which means darker colors are going to be even darker. But still, that's something you'd want to think about for your own projects and what kind of look you're going for. But this is a global tune shading, and I can add any sh other shaders or materials, or you know, I can make vertex offset shaders. And if I want tune shading on them, instead of having to every single shader I create, I've got to try and do tune shading for it. Instead, I can just have this as a global pretty much global tune shading and then I can have any shaders I want I can get shaders from the asset store or whatever and they will all conform to the same style because it's all done with a image effect so yeah that's pretty much what I want to show off I think it's kind of a neat system and it's pretty easy to make shaders and custom shaders for any way you wanted to do also another thing you're going to want to think about I will when you're um, sampling textures the textures will become skewed by aspect ratio so I've just created this aspect corrected screen chords. All it does is just um, it adjusts the t the UV coordinates of the screen based on the actual aspect ratio of the game. That way you don't get stretched um, textures or anything. Anyway, so that's pretty much all I've got for now. Um, any questions, just ask in the comments, and I'll see you next time.